Ugh. Anyway, let's uh, take a quick look around and get the fuck out of here. I don't want to hang around here more than I have uh, than I have to. Let's take a look. Uh, that's where I'm headed, at least. As you head towards the wing of a plane, the generator itself is basically built into the wing of a plane, meant to well help power the entire ship back in uh, the olden days before they figured out well we could just have a bigger engine instead of putting all these smaller as your engines about century is like oh if one fails they're back up until they decided well that's just not fly since it's pretty hard to fly in this world of course I'm gonna... as... hmm? oh sorry no carry on I uh, was just Ruben's kind of kind of like asked the group. He's just like, how many people do you think this plane would have fitted? At least like 50. Caleb, you know that this flight was capable of holding 150 people. I will relay that information. Can't say for sure that it was full up, but uh, given what we experienced back there with the hallucination and all, it sounded like this was their maiden voyage. So it probably would have been pretty full. I, uh, that's a catastrophe. And he's kind of looking around. It's like, I, I feel the weight of this place. Doc, the wasteland is full of sad stories and tragedies. Don't think about it. If you do, you're never going to get anywhere. Just don't think about it. Ruben just kind of silently nods without saying anything and presses on. He can't really muster what he would want to say in response to that. With the sound of uh, ghostly children in the background fading a little more as you get away from the main compartment, you reach the generator side and you can see that it is indeed still working, still sparking what little fuel is left within. Still workable, in fact. But what else is underneath the wing? Almost looks like there was a small shelter built and something dug out into the earth. What the hell? Ruben kind of like, he, he sort of, look, he gives everything a quick glance over, but he sort of loses his, his like faculties for a moment. He's just like, he just doesn't, like, he just doesn't say anything. He just starts moving towards the dugout area that he spotted there. Logan in his head is right. Please don't let it be a mass grave. Because we actually didn't see any bodies around, so. Well, if there is a mass grave, that means somebody was alive to bury him. Right. As you head towards the covered area of the wing, you move the cloth back that is blowing in the wind, seeing what appears to be an old storm shelter, likely part of a building that the plane may have crashed in what used to belong here. The doors themselves, one is replaced by wood, while the other still it's retains its metal foundings. Doesn't seem locked. Ruben kind of like looks back towards the other, his, uh, his comrades there, and he goes, uh, I, I'm not excited, but I have to see what's inside. Well, I'm Do you with guys you. Have my back. Uh, let's get it over with. I'll pull out my shotgun. Yeah, I'm gonna put my hand on my pistol just in case. Uh, Ruben throws open the door. As you grab hold of the door handle and pull it open, the door segments. Though it was so clean before. It seems like the door was so cleanly cut as soon as you moved it apart, 
the lower part moved, but the upper part did not, meaning you have to move several parts out of the way. Something broke into this door. The other signs on the ground long since buried under the sands. And as you go into the storm cellar, the darkness is thick and blinding. Uh, so I think I'm gonna flick it on, you know, might as well see some. Alright. The air is stale, the light from your small lighter barely illuminating the room, but enough so you don't fall down the stairs at least. And now you're inside, you can clearly see signs of markings. Almost dagger-like stabs along the floor and walls of this place. As if something was dragging itself with bladed feet downwards. I... He, he's kind of like looking over this. Do these marks, do they seem old? Or is there... Like, do they seem like they've been there for a long time? They seem like they've been there for a good while since they don't expose any new concrete. Are they just gibberish or do they make any sense? No, they are simply like stabs. Signs well, it's one of two things that stand out to me. Either A, one of the things that took the plane down, went down with it, and this is what it's uh, been doing ever since, or B, one of the survivors of the plane stuck around and uh, obviously had a few Azure-based mutations as a result. This plane crashed a long time ago. There's no way somebody survived this, right? Well, they may have survived the crash, but I don't think they'd survive the kind of Azure poisoning that would have made them have these kinds of markings left behind in their wake. I... This, this sort of, this whole situation, it, it's beyond me, but I think we should be ready for anything. I can't we, believe uh, we didn't brought the flashlight. What a stupid mistake. I'm buying one as soon as we get back. I, uh, well, you know, we were making a trip out into the desert at first. We didn't really think we'd be going any place dark in the meantime. Actually, as let me you check my get, gear. As you do get down to the bottom of the stairs, Ruben, you do knock and cause something to creak that appears to be a landon, lantern. Ooh. And Ruben just kind of grabs it and whips it out. Uh, may I borrow a light? He sure. like whoa, whoa, whoa. Keep in. that inside, man. <laughs> Zip that thing back up. Excuse me? <laughs> you said you grabbed it and whipped it out. <laughs> this oh. ain't the time or place, buddy. Sorry, yeah, I got you're, you're suspicious, Doc. Earlier you were telling me to look into your eyes and you were so close to me and stuff, like... Uh, you wanna tell <laughs> us something? I feel like two of your members are nervous, Ruben, using humor to try and def defuse their worries. Look, I, I was just trying to find out if you were with us are still staring into an illusion. There's there's a trick when you stare at somebody's eye and how they never mind. And he just please light this lantern. I'm gonna give him a light. Ruben, your light catches the almost the entirety of the room you are now currently in. And the other two see it before you do the fact that the stab marks continue on and on into the back of a room. There are tables, workstations of some kind, old, likely here even before the crash, but amongst them, there appears to be a human body impaled by the decayed body of an azure beast. The same ones you saw within the dreamscape. 
of bladed arms and legs, wings of some kind. Ruben just kind of like, it takes him a moment, like he's like squinting at it, trying to grab it, but as soon as he understands what it is that he's looking at, he just kind of recoils and takes a step back. Christ. So, there were survivors, but they came for them. Caleb will uh, go ahead and inspect the uh, the body of the the human at least, and try to see if there's anything on it, any identification or anything left behind. As you go up towards it, you see the telltale sign of a uniform. It seems to be well, since you know about the plane, you would know about the people who fly them, the co-pilot's uniform. But, as you go even closer, you notice the fact that the Azure Beast dying mid-stab of this person wasn't just sheer luck, as the beast itself is also being stabbed and impaled from the other side by an almost mimicked bladed wing growing from the arm of the co-pilot. It's not safe to assume that this did not happen uh, anywhere near in like mid-flight. He probably survived a long time to have this kind of mutation happen. Can I? Yeah, I'm. I'm going to inspect the mutation. Ruben's never. I've never seen anything like this. And he, he's kind of like, yeah. I, he's just kind of like thumbing it with a with a gloved hand just trying to understand what he's looking at the bladed wing of itself looks almost capable of flight as does the wings of the azure beast at least gliding capability maybe you want to so take some kind of, of this... genetic sample of that that seems like it could be a good thing to have are both of his arms wings? No, only one. And oh, the yeah. blade parts of themselves looks to be some sort of organic metal. The fuck? I'm I'm going to like go through his pockets to see if I can if he has like his badge or if I can find his name. As you look through his pockets for as your beast's body creaks a little bit and finally, after decades of not being disturbed, falls to the ground. Messed up. And as you take a look once more, the tag on the body reads out this guy's name. His name was... Alex Rift. Ruben uh, pockets the tag and uh, puts it in his bag. And after he does that, he is going to he is going to try attempt to get a sample of the different part, bits of the arm and maybe a, if there's any blood left in this individual, a blood sample as well. You can't get a blood sample. He's long since decayed past that point, but his bone marrow is still present. Yeah, so I'm gonna grab a sample of bone marrow, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna take like a scalpel, and I'm gonna test the strength of his metal arm that he has. Just like try to see what happens if I apply pressure. Uh, what you mean on the metal parts of his uh, bladed arm? Yeah, just uh, you just inspecting it, trying just trying to determine if how strong it might be. Okay, could you roll me medicine for all of that? I would say out of uh, free difficulty, free purple dice. Meanwhile, what are the other two doing? Uh, I'm curious about it as well, so I'd probably be assisting him with that. Uh, right. I'm probably gonna be busy making sure that the area is secure and there's no nasty surprises or anything down here. And since uh, messing with fucking mutated monsters ain't really my shtick 
Uh, I am gonna probably take a look around the room, see if there's uh, anything else that might catch my eye. You know, nothing in general, just, I don't know, maybe there's something, uh, some kind of old time tech that uh, they were carrying on the plane, or maybe some kind of useful tools or something, anything. Okay. <clears throat> or maybe some information, if that's somehow available, about what the fuck happened. As you are looking around... Ooh, nice. As you are looking around, you see on one of the workstations, there are at least a few arms of, this, of these kinds of azure beasts. Not the one that stabbed him, mind you, but... It seems like he was attempting to make weapons out of their arms. There are swords of differing sizes made out of their sword-like wings on the workstation. Messed up. Spears made out of the bladed feathers that make up the rest of their arms. And even a human arm. This one, right. however, you do recognize. As you remember it definitively of the same kind of uniform the captain was wearing. Seemed like this was the man's severed arm. Do I... was I able to, like, get a... What was the result of the uh, me trying to work with the metal bit of his arm there? Oh, I'm just uh, I'm going to mention in a minute. While you're doing that, I'm just saying what he sees. And also, Logan, as you peer around, you see a large barn-like door at one end of this room. I'm going to slowly make my way towards it, so expect it. There seems to be a simple padlock on the door, and a journal hanging off the wall to the side. I'm gonna take the journal and uh, flip, check out what's inside. As you open it up, it seems to be a journal based on the days after this crash, at least after the first five pages. The first five pages are normal things, such as, my girlfriend gave me this journal, I guess I'll write in it from now on on each flight I take. However, after that, you find a crew manifest with ticks off of the side of the names. Oh. I can guess what's gonna be behind that fucking door. I'm gonna put down the journal and uh, ignore the door for now and uh, go and collect uh, some of those makeshift uh, spears. They might uh, they might be worth something somebody knows. Okay. Now, <clears throat> back to the medicine roll. As you are testing the metal, you find that it's a rather flexible metal, but it's tough. It's as if, don't think of it like rigid, like diamond. It's more like rubber, but sharp and malleable. Yeah, he's kind of, uh, Ruben's kind of fiddling with it, and he just goes, it's almost cartilage-like, but so durable. Is uh, he, he's kind of like thumbing it. It's like the adaptations that Azure can force on the body is credible. Near the tips, of course, that is most rigid part. And it is the strongest part of this bladed arm. Clearly shown by the fact that it even punctured the metal of the beast that it stabbed. I can't help but think that uh, given its uh, resilience and its flexibility, it would make a very good armor more so than it would a weapon. Yeah, for the for the capabilities of flight, it would need to be flexible, but I understand. Uh, Ruben, yeah, I guess I'll just... He, he kind of looks at Logan, 
And he's, uh, can I borrow one of those weapons? Yeah, sure, go ahead. I'm just gonna take one of the bladed weapons. Like, I know this probably isn't the kindest thing I can do. Uh, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to accept my apologies there, Alex. I'll give your family my condolences. And he brings the blade down with the intention of severing his, uh, wing arm. Okay. Well, he's not gonna move, clearly. So... As you bring down the, the blade, you sever his arm at the base, seeing it fall off dust and bony remains of what once was his human-like structure now fall to the ground. But as it does, something glints inside of the arm. And when you bring the lantern up, you see a watch embedded within the metal of the arm. And, Ruben, would you like to roll Discipline for me? Uh, <laughs> I'll do it. Uh, is that two? Yeah. Yep, yeah, it it's basic two. Alright. Hey! As the visions come to you, Ruben, hard and fast, you are able to filter them, control them, focus them. It's strange, it feels almost second nature to go through this flash of memory this watch belonged to the captain the very arm that now lays on the table beside you it seemed like the co-pilot had an attachment to his father but in the aftermath in everything after he was forced to bury the crew find shelter make sure he was not spotted by the azure beasts around him taking and eating what he could of their flesh eventually mutating into what he is now well after his death this watch became the center of this very anomaly this watch is the cause of the anomaly you could take it easily Simply removing it from the area would stop the anomaly. It would be contained. Ruben's eyes kind of like gloss over for a moment, and he's just like, he's almost like, just just kind of going off and goes, Alex, his father, the Azur beasts, and he kind of like looks up. He was fighting for his life. He was the only survivor. And he's, he kind of like, as he's going and he goes, the watch, the watch. And then he like pulls it right out. He just reaches in and yanks it. This is it. But he's not really, he, he's kind of just like, he's almost, his eyes are almost vacant as he's like going like this. He's just kind of, he's just kind of going through the motions. So you take the watch from the wing, do you? Yeah. Ruben will pull it out and just basically like hold it up. As you do that, a sense of peace almost washes over all three of you, as if passing on a legacy, the memory of what happened here. Whatever Alex was, he's thankful that they won't be forgotten anytime soon. Thankful for you both, for you all. More so towards you, Reuben. One who understood what needed to be done. It's and a nice watch. Feels like the past <laughs> is reclaimed. We should take it to Bone Stars. Uh, Ru it's, it's, uh, it, he's kind of staring at it. It's more than just a watch. We have to find. The Swift family. I have to return this. They deserve it. You do feel something strange about the watch, however, I would like to point out, Ruben, that despite you, well, stopping the anomaly, the watch itself hasn't, well... One second. The watch itself isn't exactly normal anymore. It has spent... 150 years within this anomaly and it is no longer a normal watch 
gentlemen. Uh, he, he's kind of like looking at it. Is it so? It's not like basically. Do I get the impression that it's safe to handle? It's not like gonna explode or do anything weird. Or I guess I'll like hand it to Caleb. It's like you might, you might want to look at this. Like I said, it's a nice looking watch. Look, he, he's, he's 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 like handing. It's like there's there's more to this watch. Just uh, and he, he's he's like shaking. So like, don't ask me how I know. I just know there's something with this watch. Could you look at it, please? Sure. I'll head over to the uh, the workstation that was set up for the. I'm guessing the manufacturer of those weapons. And just kind of set the watch down on it and uh, get my toolkit out and take a look. Give it a poke and pro Give it a poke. Well, it seems like an ordinary ancient watch. It's probably worth a very pretty penny, but you don't know what's unique about it. It seems to be ticking again, however, which seems impossible. In fact, you can't even detect any power from it to make it keep ticking. There's not even a battery inside of it anymore. That's a neat little ability right there. Eh, it can't be solar powered since it's working in here too, and I don't think it's been moving for a while. I, uh... This watch was very important to Alex and his family. I'm just gonna ask directly to make sure. Did what did did I basically find out that the pilot was the co-pilot's dad? Yes. And yeah. also, like you also know the ability of this watch now. And you, you know that. that. Yes. Have did you not see the watch I put up? Oh, did I miss it? Yeah, it's a it on your screen. Oh, sorry. It's my mistake. <laughs> I didn't because my screen my character screen was overlapping it. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I noticed the image, I did not realize I could scroll down. <laughs> yeah, I had to stop me the edit to do that, but yeah. So he's kind of like looking over it and it's like, I believe this watch has the ability, and I, I understand this is going to sound insane, I believe it has the ability to tamper with fate. Well, it sir didn't do them much good. Well, it only happened after they crashed. <laughs> I know that, but Caleb doesn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh... Hmm. And, and Ruben's kind of like, I wonder, I wonder how long this incident has been hanging over the Swift family. I, I think when we get back, I'm going to try to reach out to them. Offer them some I mean, kind of closure. A long, long time ago. I don't even know if there'd be any family survivors left. Yeah, I, they're descendants. You know they had kids. How you know that? And Ruben strikes like I, I don't know that, but I'd like to find out. Hey, yeah. you know, the, lo the, wa the watch, though, what you do with it, it's your call. I don't mind either Ruben way. Ruben kind of, like, uh, snaps the watch on his biological hand. <laughs> <clears> At <throat> any rate, now that that's been resolved, let's see if we can't find something else and get the hell out. Yeah, I mean, as long as we're not going to have any more spook visions, I think it's safe to explore the rest of this area. Yeah, 